Welcome to this short lecture on swallowing. So swallowing is a fairly complicated reflex that's governed by not only the brainstem but all the muscula musculature in the pharynx and esophagus. So as we've seen in previous, previous videos, the pharynx itself is a conduit for both the respiratory system and the digestive system. So to be able to swallow, we have to essentially coordinate these two systems to as we push the food down, we don't want to put, push the food into the respiratory tract and we don't really want to be initiating breathing whilst we're trying to swallow. So the swallowing process is coordinated between a voluntary and an involuntary phases and these can be broken into three main phases. Firstly, we could have the, the oral or the buccal phase. Secondly, we have the pharyngeal. And lastly, we have the esophagus. Esophageal. So with those phases, the first one is completely voluntary, so that's under our own control, and the latter two are essentially autonomic or involuntary. So let's have a look at this picture quickly. So this is a mid-sagittal cut, so we've cut straight down the midline. We've got the outside is the nose, the upper lip, lower lip, chin, going down to the neck. Inside we've got the nasal cavity here, demarcated with a soft palate, blue hard palate, here is the tongue in a sagittal plane and here this green round is going to be the, um, the bolus of food. Coming down to the, the lower pharynx into the larynx, we're going to have the hyoid bone, the epiglottis and then the vocal folds. So this is going to continue into the trachea. And at the back we've got the esophageal um, tube. Sit, sitting right behind we're going to have the brainstem which is going to be important for, to talk about essentially the neurological control. So let's, let's now go into these three phases and see how each one of them work to essentially get this bolus of food down into the stomach, which takes about 6 to 10 seconds from the mouth down into the stomach, and how we can do that without compromising the airway. So let's start off with the oral or buccal phase. As I said, this is completely voluntary, so this is controlled over your own volition. So food goes into the mouth, we use our teeth to break up the, the food and we start to form a bolus with a combination of lubrication from the, the salivary glands. So once the bolus has formed, essentially the nerves that coordinate this, this process is going to be the hypoglossal nerve, so C, cranial nerve 12 which is going to innervate the tongue and then basically the, the muscles of mastication in which you're going to move the jaw is going to be innervated by the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve. So as that bolus has been broken up, formed, lubricated, it's now pushed to the back of the pharynx, predominantly by the tongue. So the tongue is going to push the bolus posteriorly and superiorly until it starts to hit to the back of the pharynx. And that's essentially the end of the first phase because as, as soon as it starts to impede onto the back wall, we start to innovate certain afferent nerve fibers which are going to move into the pharyngeal phase. So moving on to the pharyngeal phase, the pharyngeal phase is, as I said, it's essentially involuntary and it can be almost subdivided into six further phases. Okay, so the first thing that happens is as the bolus moves to the back of the, the pharynx, it's going to bring up quite sensitive receptors, afferent receptors that are going to pick up that bolus moving into that area. Now, those receptors are going to be uh, epithelial nature and they're going to be picking it up in, there's essentially a pharyngeal ring around the top of the pharynx called the tonsillar pillars and they're going to be very sensitive to that bolus moving down. So essentially probably two nerves are going to pick up afferents. It's probably going to be a combination of trigeminal and glossopharyngeal. These nerves are going to relay back to the brainstem. Now predominantly the nuclei that we're focused on is the swallowing centre or the deglutition centre. And this is in the lower pons upper medulla. And so this which I've drawn here, this centre is probably got a, a combination because it is uh, going to be involved in a reflex. It's going to have a sensory input motor output. The motor output is essentially going to be working off uh, nucleus, which is the nucleus ambiguous, which is going to have basically the, um, the ninth, 
so the glossopharyngeal, the tenth, the, the, the vagus, and a bit of the uh, cranial accessory, which blended together gives you the nucleus ambiguous. Whereas the sensory input's probably going to be more tractor solitaris, which is going to be those nerves that we spoke about. These nerves are going to go in, essentially go into that swallowing centre and tell it that there is an incoming signal coming. And so that's the first of the six phases. It's just going to afferent processing. As a result, you're going to have, I'll change colour here, you're going to have a motor output coming kind of to the smooth, sorry, to the soft palate. So that's going to innovate the soft palate and the soft palate will come up. So the soft palate will come and close off the nasal cavity, which is going to prevent any kind of reflux going back into the nose. So that's the kind of the first motor signal that's going to activate in the pharyngeal phase. So the first is the afferent, second is the first part of the motor. The next one is essentially the palatine pharyngeal folds. So these are on either side of the back of the pharynx, oropharynx. You've got these folds. These palatine pharyngeal folds with their associated muscles will contract and they will approximate. So they'll come in. So each one of these folds on either side of the, uh, the oral cavity will come in closer and make this narrow sagittal slit. And so that's going to be another motor signal kind of into that area. And that's going to innovate the muscles to close that off. And so what that's going to do, that narrowing, is it going to make harder for the bolus to come down. It centralizes the bolus and makes it being pushed into the center. But it's going to ensure that the bolus has to be a certain size to get down into it. So that's the, the third phase in the pharyngeal phase. The next one is all kind of around the larynx. So what will happen now, and this is going to be probably generated by the vagus, probably recurrent mostly, recurrent laryngeal, maybe a bit of superior laryngeal. It's going to close off the vocal folds, so they're going to close. And then we're going to have muscles coming from the hyoid to the thyroid. And because this is a whole unit now, it's going to contract, so the suprahyoid muscles, and going to pull the larynx up. So the larynx will rise, okay, coming towards, moving upwards. And what that will do is essentially not only close that off, not only rise that up, but because the epiglottis is kind of fairly mobile, it will come down and close that whole cavity off. So this will essentially move down like so. So not only have we closed the airway off, so now the food can't get down into the trachea, but the epiglottis will come over and close over the laryngeal inlet to close and prevent any food going down into the laryn larynx, essentially. And so that's going to cause that to go up and then the esophagus is starting to open. So that's the next phase. Okay. Then we're going to have essentially the muscles that are going to so the, the, the motor movement or the neural to the motor, which is going to start to activate the, um, the pharyngeal constrictors, which are going to start to pulse and move that bolus. Now it's going to be directed because we've closed, epiglottis has closed off the anterior tube. So now this bolus is going to be forced down into the top part of the esophagus. And then probably the last little phase is probably an inhibitory phase, which is going to start to relax the upper esophageal sphincter. And so they're, they're essentially the six fa little phases, subphases in the pharyngeal phase, which is that autonomic phase. So what we have to do is receive the afferent, which has gone back to the, um, the brainstem, and we've got all these reflexing motor signals that are going to the soft palate, the palatopharyngeal arch, then going down to the larynx to bring it up, epiglottis comes over, esophagus starts to open, the sphincter opens, so that comes, the bolus now comes into the upper part of the esophagus, and we start to form a wave, which is going to push it down into the esophage esophageal phase now. So we're moving now into the last phase, which is the esophageal phase. The esophageal phase is broken into two main ones, which is going to be a primary and secondary. Now this process, again, will take only a few seconds, depending on whether you're upright or 
laying down. If you're upright, it's going to be a quicker transition because gravity is assisting, but if you're more horizontal, it might take a bit longer, a few seconds longer. Essentially, the esophageal phase just follows the pharyngeal phase. So what we've done is we've pushed the bolus down into the lower pharynx and then into the top part of the esophagus. Because we've brought the larynx up and we've opened the esophageal, so we've got this upper esophageal sphincter, which is normally closed off at about 50 millimetres of mercury pressure. So that's usually closed off between, swallowing, between swallows, so that's closed off. But as we get this inhibitory signal going down, it will drop down to zero, which will open the sphincter and allow the bolus to come in. Then through the activation of the upper the constrictors and then the upper esophagus. Now remember that the constrictors, the pharyngeal constrictors, are going to be innervated by essentially the vagus nerve and same with the top part of the esophagus. Now remember the esophagus is about 20 centimetres in length. The top third is completely striated muscle. The middle third is mixed and the bottom third is smooth. So the top part is going to have a different type of activation and then the others is going to be um, completely peristalsis. So as the bolus moves down, it's just a continuation. So it's a primary peristalsis continuation from coming from the pharyngeal phase. And it's just going to continue down and push the, the bolus down into the stomach. Now, unlike the, the upper esophageal sphincter, which is normally sitting at a rest in pressure of 50, the rest of the esophagus has a pressure of zero. Okay, so normally there's no pressure in it. So as that bolus moves through, the activation of the muscles will actually cause the pressure to go up to approximately 50 millimeters of mercury. So as it pushes on the bolus, it's gonna go up and then transiently go back to zero. Now that's in the primary peristaltic phase. If the bolus doesn't get pushed all the way through and we have the bolus kind of remaining in the esophagus, then the pressure that's pushed from that, from that bolus, which is received back by the vagal um, afferent, so the vagus is going to be receiving sensations here, which is sensory, going back to the brainstem. And that's going to be telling what the esophagus is doing in stretch and this is going to go back. And now if that bolus remains there, these vagus afferents is going to go back to the brainstem and tell us, tell the brainstem that there is still something there. And then it will send through another secondary peristatic wave, which will push it through and hopefully clear it down into the stomach. As we get down to the lower esophageal sphincter, similarly, it's resting at 30 millimetres of mercury. So that's its resting phase. But as the bolus moves through, because as move, the bolus is moving down and getting pushed on, the underneath the bolus has to be inhibited. So we do have to have uh, a signal that's going down and cause an inhibition to allow that bolus to pass as we push behind it. And as we get down to the lower esophageal sphincter, that goes from 30 to back to zero. So it goes to zero millimeters of mercury as the bolus goes through it and then it goes back to 30 to stop the reflux going back up. And that's essentially the esophageal phase. Another thing that I will say just quickly, as this um, reflex occurs, it does send an inhibitory signal to the respiratory center, which will essentially turn off the breathing whilst that six to eight seconds of swallowing occurs. And then once it's passed through, then we can pass air through the other side and the whole process continues. So just to reiterate, swallowing itself is broken into three phases. We've got the oral, pharyngeal, and esophageal. The oral phase is really just about getting the bolus to the back of the throat or the back of the pharynx. The pharyngeal phase is broken into those six little phases, which is going to be sensory to pick up the stimulus, put the soft palate up, close the palatopharyngeal split to narrow it off, bring the larynx up, open the sphincter, start to constrict the pharyngeal constrictors, which are the 
is going to be the superior, middle and inferior. And then we move to the esophageal phase, which can be done by a primary peristalsis, which is generally the phase that will occur. But if the bolus doesn't get all the way through, we move into a secondary phase, which clears it and finishes it off. The, just in terms of the pressures in the esophagus, the upper esophageal sphincter always sits at about 50 millimetres of mercury pressure to make sure nothing gets down there normally. But as the esophageal phase starts, it will relax open and drop to zero to allow the bolus to get through. And the esophagus proper is usually at a zero pressure, but as the bolus gets pushed through, it goes up to 50 to push it down. And then finally, the lower esophageal sphincter, which is as it's entering the stomach, normally sits at 30 millimetres of mercury to stop acid going back up the esophagus. But as it's coming through, inhibitory signals are coming from the vagal or the nucleus ambiguous, which is going to tell that to open, drop to zero, the food goes into the stomach, then it goes back to 30, close it off. In addition, the lower esophageal sphincter is kind of obliquely arranged, so any kind of pressure should kind of be sealed off um, in a certain way to stop that reflux occurring. That reflux, that sphincter is not the most efficient, and so many people do get reflux by that inefficiency of that sphincter. So that's the, that's the reflex of swallowing. Hopefully you've now understood it. Thank you.